Hi, I'm Stephanie Rublitz. Welcome back to my channel. It's bra day and we are making a sports bra. All right, so continuing on with our bra series, we have moved into sports bras. So what's the difference between some of the bralettes that we have been making and sports bras? Other than, you know, some of the style options, um, sports bras have much more support. Sometimes they can be a similar style as a bralette, but bralettes are not really built for support. Sports bras are. Today's bra sew with me is the Power Sports bra from Green Style Patterns. It retails for $12. It has no trim pages if you print it out at home, and it features four different views. So two of them are racer back, two of them are strappy. Um, but then it also comes with instructions to make it a nursing bra if that's something that you need. So tons of options with this one pattern. I feel like it's well worth your money. I'm not affiliated. I get nothing but I will link them below in case you want to go to their website and check it out. As always, when I do my reveal at the end, I'm going to have a tank top underneath because I work in a junior high school and it would just be weird if my students saw me on the internet in my bra. So I'm sorry, but that's how it has to be. I did get some feedback though that um, after I do the over the top of the tank top reveal, um, some people wanted to see what it looked like underneath the garment just to see how the garment laid on top of it. I am totally okay with that. So I will do the over the tank top reveal and then I will switch it around. Without further ado, let's sew together. All right, let's take a peek at the pattern pieces first. So uh, there are two pieces for the straps. Then this is the piece for the band cover. And then what we're left with is the back of the bra, the center cup and the side cups. Now I've gone and added an inch and a half rise into mine just because I'm super tall and that's what I need. Now I've cut out all my pieces. I've got my band in my main fabric and I've got my straps also in my main fabric. The rest of the pieces I have in my main fabric as well as a lining fabric. Now I'm just gonna put my main fabric off to the side for a minute because my lining fabric needs to have a quarter inch removed off the bottom of the pieces. So two of the pieces have this curved edge in the pattern piece. So I'm just going to use the pattern as my guide. I'm measuring it down a quarter inch, putting some pattern weights on, and then I'm just gonna use my rotary cutter and follow that pattern piece. On my center cut piece, it's a straight line, so I could just use my ruler. Now, I guess I could have just actually cut a second pair of pattern pieces that had the quarter inch removed and then used those pattern pieces to make my lining, but this way I get to save paper and it's really not that big of a deal to do this little extra step. Now it's time for assembly. I'm going to pin my side cups onto my center cup. There we go, I'm gonna stitch that out and then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Next, I'm gonna repeat that process with my main fabric. And if you're noticing that your fabric kind of gets pushed down into like through the hole into where the bobbin is, um, you can just take a piece of paper and put that behind your fabric. It'll add some stability so that you don't wind up with that problem. Now here I've got my lining and my main fabric and it's time to add the back. All I need to do is line up the raw edges on the sides, pin them and stitch them out. And then I'm going to repeat that on my lining. Here we go, I have it all together and you can see I've top stitched my busted seams as well. And now I can put these off to the side and work on my straps. So here are my straps. I've sewed them together with a zigzag stitch and underneath that stitch I've put a length of quarter inch elastic. Now the instructions call for you to use the clear lingerie elastic but I didn't have any and I'm doing a sustainability challenge this month and so part of that is I have committed to not purchasing any new products and just using what's in my stash. Um, so this is what I have, this is what I'm using. And you know what? It actually ended up working really well. So I've sewn a little loop on the, to the end of my elastic and I'm just wrapping that around the end of my long crochet hook so that I can use that hook to pull my strap right side out. Easy peasy. Now it's time to attach those straps onto the body of the bra. As I'm putting these on, the longer straps are going on the outside and the shorter straps are going on the inside and I'm just making sure that I have them rotated so that the seam is going to be on the underside of the strap when I'm wearing it. 
Once I have those pinned on, I am going to secure them with a zigzag stitch. All right, those are all secured on. Now it's time to attach the lining to the main fabric. With right sides together, I've tucked the lining inside the bra, and I'm just going to pin this together before I stitch it out. Now, as I get around the back, there are two small areas that I'm going to leave unpinned. I don't want to stitch those areas because I'm going to have to actually tuck my straps into those little holes. So I'm going to leave them unstitched for now. Um, and then we'll go back and stitch those after I've tested the length of the straps. All right, it's all together. And you can see I have those two little holes where I can test my straps. And I'm just gonna go try that on right now and check the length. All right, so I've tried it on and turns out they are the like exact right length that I need them, which is amazing. So I'm going to tuck the ends into those little holes and I'm going to pin them at about a 30 degree angle because they're coming across my back, right? So you don't wanna pin them straight up and down. So I'm gonna pin them at a 30 degree angle and then I'm going to stitch those holes back together and that will secure the straps. Make sure while you're doing this that your strap's not getting all twisted up. Now I'm just folding the garment in half to make sure that both of my straps are coming in equidistant from the side seams. Then I'll go ahead and stitch those out. Those are good and secure now. Before I attach my other straps, I need to once again turn the garment inside out and on the seam allowance, I'm going to attach this quarter inch elastic. Again, it's supposed to be the clear lingerie elastic, but this is all that I had. So I'm just going to pin that onto my seam allowance and then stitch that out with a zigzag stitch. Now that that's on, I can turn the garment right side out and focus on the long straps, which turns out were a problem. I should have added the inch and a half to the long straps um, when I added the inch and a half to my bra pattern. So frustrating. Um, so I'm trying to problem solve. Um, I don't want to just attach them in the middle like that. I don't think that that's going to look good. Um, if I have them come down more in the middle, that's not going to work. If I have them come down straight, it, they're still going to be too short. So. In the end, I didn't want to be wasteful, but I had to make new, longer straps. The good news is, is these straps, the next bra I make, will be um, long enough for the short straps. So I'm just gonna have to make another one of these bras, I guess, which I'm okay with. Um, but as you can see, yeah, nothing I'm trying to make work is is gonna do it. So excuse me a moment while I make new straps and put them in. You don't need to see that whole process because you've basically just seen it. All right, new straps made, reinstalled, everything's good. I am going to um, secure those straps to the bottom edge of the bra. Again, I'm making sure that they're not twisted and that they're gonna lay nicely on top of the straps that are already there. Now I need to attach the lining to the main fabric. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to match up all of my vertical seams. So my side seams and the bottom of the bust seams. Once I have all those seams matched up, I'm going to pin out the rest of the raw edge and then I'm going to sew it together with a zigzag stitch. Here I have some elastic that I'm going to use for my band. I'm going to sew that together with a square and an X to make sure that's good and secure. And I'm also going to take my band cover, folding it with right sides together, and I'm going to run a seam along the edge of that. Now, before I put this together, I'm just folding my band cover just so that I can see where the equidistant points are so that I can divide it into four. So it will make it easier when I put it on the bra because I have to stretch the bra out a little bit to fit onto the band cover. Um, and I wanna make sure that I don't have sort of all of my um, extra fabric in one spot so that I don't have like weird loose spots. Now I'm going to put my elastic over top of that so as I fold that wrong sides together the elastic will be trapped inside my band cover and I'm just going to make sure that all of those pins that I have marking my four equal sections um, those are all just going to become double pins so when I pin it to my garment um, I'll know that those are the pins marking my four sections. All right, we're in the home stretch now. So I've got my band all pinned together and I'm going to pull my garment inside 
So with raw edges together, I'm going to pin the band cover to my garment. And I'm starting by matching up the four sections of my band with the equal sections on my garment. And then I just pull slightly as I pin it together. Now I'm going to zigzag stitch that all together. The last thing I need to do is do one vertical stitch along the band so that I can make sure that my elastic's not gonna twist in there. Okay, so here we go. I know the tank top underneath is not ideal, especially because we're gonna be showing you the strappy back, which I really like. Obviously, I definitely needed to add that extra height, but let's talk about the like glaring fit issue that I do have here. Um, I should have also spread the pattern wider a bit because it just comes in too narrow here. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I didn't. I am going to make more of these bras, and so I'll make that adjustment in future. But for now, let's look at what we've got. Um, yeah, for sure, that <laughs> kind of would have been better if it was about there, I think. So that's what I'm going to do next time. Um, the strappy back, I'm absolutely... I'm loving and I like it actually with the thicker elastic but then if you are working with a fabric that is maybe a little bit more stretchy but you don't want to have to go out and buy new fabric you don't want to waste the fabric that you have then adding the thicker elastic is probably a really good option for you all right I'll be right back I'm gonna go try it on under my tank top now all right so here we are underneath the tank top um, you can still see I've got that fit issue and it definitely shows but that's me not making the adjustment to the pattern. That's not the pattern itself. Um, I do have a really broad frame and a really tall frame, so I need to adjust for both of those. I just, for whatever reason, didn't think of it. So there you go. I really like it. It's so comfortable. And I really like, rather than just having a bra band, having a fabric covered band at the bottom. It's just so much nicer against the skin. Well, there we go. That's the bra for this month. Would you have gone for strappy or racerback? I'm curious. Like there's so many options with this pattern. Let me know in the comments below. Other than that, I've got nothing else for you this week. Do all the things, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.